Hey traders, welcome to today's video. I'm Chris here with Daily Wave Cafe. It is the 15th of May. Uh, let's take a look at the markets. Uh, plenty of breakouts took place today, and I want to draw your attention to this chart once again. Uh, this is where we've been tagging and following um, this correction uh, on more of a cleaner version without any indicators, just pure price. Um, and, uh, you know, going back in here, you can see where the market had the first initial drop. I mean, it had a recovery after this, um, you know, almost a 6% correction into 49.50. Um, then we had another scare here with the drop after the meta earnings and GDP softer, if you remember that day. Uh, then, you know, we went up, made a new high, created what looked to be a three-wave move, then dropped lower. Uh, in the Fed announcement day at the beginning of May. So, um, very soon after that, the market recovered. It failed to continue low. We were talking about the importance of breaking the lows of this candle uh, to start to confirm that three-wave move. Uh, but instead, the market pushed higher gap and gave us the signal that uh, this move is a failure. And uh, we started to kind of look more towards the long side uh, and start nibbling uh, for the long positions. Now, um, you can see in here how tricky it is, uh, you know, if you make an assumption um, that a move higher is just a three-wave move against an ongoing trend. And you wouldn't be wrong if you've made that assumption. The a place you would be wrong then it would be if uh, the market would break the high of that level uh, right there let's say that you would think that that would be an ABC and the moment it breaks above that level then that ABC becomes um, invalid and uh, you know we got to look for uh, the next uh, um, you know likely possibilities which in case of the S&P 500 uh, being in an uptrend was that this market will continue to try to to maybe tag uh, again and make new all-time highs. Uh, sure, this correction here could have uh, taken uh, different forms, but that's all assumption uh, following price works better. So anyhow, it does look like this could be a very simple one, two, one, two, and then you're in the middle of a larger third. Um, it should be followed, it should continue, should be followed by a four and a five for four and a five as this market uh, uh, continues to push. We'll see if that's the case, but again, uh, you know, keeping track of these events where uh, that they come when uh, the sentiment is a bit extreme and people are fearful, uh, uh, you know, kind of help you visualize a bit better, uh, you know, the reactions and uh, kind of how the market actually responded, right? Um, so let's uh, take a look. I want to take it through the counts and just keep it on the weekly, uh, just simple and basic. You can see in here we're continuing to track this larger wave three. Uh, in the S&P 500, which um, I don't think uh, um, it's over. There was a chance that it was going to be over right here at this high, uh, but this correction here is very small. I would not uh, dare to place a fourth wave uh, orange uh, on that correction um, just by the uh, pure size of this larger wave two um, you know, my assumption is that that's what it is. And then this wave three uh, remains in progress. Uh, so that's the S&P 500. And, you know, pictures on the weekly time frame just kind of keep you uh, cleaner uh, um, and, and give you a bit of perspective without necessarily getting too scared. But, um, you know, that does not mean that, you know, when you see breaks of uh, key moving averages or levels, it doesn't mean that, you know, you're not supposed to reduce exposure just for protection, um, you know, and then reinitiate when the market kind of tells you while keeping in mind uh, the larger the larger uh, count in here. So there's the S&P. I showed this yesterday as well in the, in the you know, into the update. Um, my attempt of labeling the NASDAQ 100 in here to a 1-2, um, broke higher, came back, just very really basic retest of these highs from 2022, 2021. And then with the continuation, we'll see what happens here. If it gets a uh, larger traction, then this wave three should be much stronger. Uh, then you have, uh, I'm going to go, that's the daily. I'm not going to, I don't think I've done any particular work on that at the moment. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll uh, revisit later. Uh, I want to go with the weekly charts into weekly. A much larger wave two, I'm thinking of flat. 
probably another one and a small two in here and then we'll see you know if that's true that means that the markets are about ready to actually stage much much larger moves so um you know you could see the reaction from yesterday you can see the reaction from today the fed is kind of out of the way just kind of holding there the cpis are now really uh, coming into focus it's an election year um so i you know there's I mean, sure, risks can come uh, from anywhere in this world, right? And and uh, anything can happen. But uh, under current assumptions, this would be that this should continue to go. So we'll, um, you know, we'll see um, what happens in there and the, on the Indus, so on the Jones, and and you know that that has a lot more to go. If it wants to, then IWM, it's a stock that I think it's it's. Um, you know, it's got a lot of opportunity here. If this was the end of the correction in a wave two a red, then you're looking for this minor wave one, two. And, um, you know, again, just the idea of a possible flat in here. Uh, you could have the one, two, one, two still since you didn't break below these laws. But, it, you know, it doesn't matter really. The direction should be the same. But if this is a, you know, a wave two correction here, I mean, goodness, you're just beginning, uh, you're just in very early stages of a much larger wave three right here, right? I mean, uh, it can it can, it can, can really, really accelerate and uh, get towards 300 level uh, by the time um, this wave three is over. So um, definitely, you know, one of the better opportunities out there. Now, there's still a bunch of supply coming in at about 220, 225 into the uh, Russell 2000 in IWM, uh, but... Uh, you know, if we're starting to overtake this high, I think, uh, um, you know, not, uh, you know, having a non-zero exposure, let me just say that, having a non-zero exposure, I think it's important. And then you can add on that uh, um, on further confirmations. But, um, you know, I see this as a pretty good potential um, to see if it breaks. And then, um, you know, I'm not ready to talk about gold and uh, the other markets. Let's take a look at Bitcoin. Um, on the weekly time frames, we talked about this yesterday. Today, we finally got the signal uh, with the break, and I'm going to go to the Bitcoin chart here uh, with the break above uh, 66k. Uh, the other level is 67,500. That matters. So right now we're trading 65,913. We broke 60, 66k. We are above that 50-day uh, moving average close above there I think would be important look at the volume coming in so you want low volume on corrections uh, you know high volume as you're starting to break the RSI it's rating 57 almost uh, PPO is turning up still below zero uh, but this is an initial sign surely it could very simply be an ABC and you could fail and if that's the case then then you know you got to exit out uh, but you know the fact that you overtook this high I think that's the first initial step um, that requires at least an initial position and then, you know, uh, further add-ons above 67,500 and then, you know, above 70 and so on. So interesting move out of there. And this is kind of in line with this larger third wave. And, um, you know, uh, labeling this, uh, you know, as a fourth wave would limit me to say that there is a small fifth coming and then uh, down. Um, so my thinking is that it's probably could be, you know, just another wave one and another wave two uh, by the size of this correction. And you could actually uh, go much, much higher. But again, uh, that's just kind of, you know, uh, staying with the trend, uh, respecting the fact that you're in a higher, high, higher, low situation above the key moving averages and holding, uh, uh, you know, important supports here at 60. That it is a fourth wave or a full wave two. Uh, we have no real way of knowing, and I don't want to make any assumptions on that. Uh, we'll let the market kind of guide us and see what happens there. Um, so, you know, that's uh, that's about it uh, for today. Thanks for uh, watching, as always. Go ahead and check out the Daily Drip with a few notes on there. But overall, um, I do remain, going back to the S&P, uh, you know, I do consider this a... Um, you know, a significant break that's been confirmed by multiple markets on higher volume. And I think one has to listen to this, um, you know, until proven otherwise, um, you know, that's the message of the market. Uh, you know, the 20-day will become support on the way down. And if we can get into a series of, you know, any dips towards the 20-day to be a green arrow and a viable opportunity, you know, we'll go with that as, as we're trying to follow the trend. So, um 
you know, there is a gap here. We'll see uh, kind of what, what, what happens here. But I think most of the data is out of the way. We do have uh, NVIDIA earnings, which are a week from today, I think on the 22nd. So that's going to be the next catalyst um, to see. But the semiconductors have broken above that uh, zone. Uh, let me show that to you. Semi SOX, right, that we were talking about yesterday. This uh, right here, about 5,000, we're trading 5,045 on the semiconductor index. Uh, and I think that's a, uh, it should be a decent signal and, and, and one that can be, can be taken pretty seriously um, and expecting a move towards above 5,200. So uh, thanks for watching. As always, I will talk to you tomorrow. Bye.